So this presentation is going to be focused on the use of the Hand Hygiene Australia Learning Management System, in particular for guidance and troubleshooting advice for the administrators already using the system. So it's a bit of a how-to for administrators. So the Learning Management System was developed to meet one of the primary aims of the National Hand Hygiene Initiative which essentially was to develop an effective education and credentialing system to improve knowledge about hand hygiene and about infection control. So a quick overview of what I'm going to be presenting is talking about the new learning man management system and there's some statistics about it, give you an orientation to the learner view, do some troubleshooting for organisation administrators within the system and to talk about reporting with this new system and some future developments. So since the release of the new learning management system on the 23rd of March this year, we have had 235,000 people registered in the new system. Of that, we've had 187,000 modules completed. Most of those modules are hand hygiene modules, but there's a significant number of people doing the infection control modules also. So it averages out to about 754 modules completed every day since the release. That's a lot of people learning about hand hygiene. So where are the learners from? Predominantly from Australia, but there are also some from New Zealand and another amount that are called other from anywhere in the world. So as you're probably hopefully all aware, we do have a number of hand hygiene modules targeted to specific groups. Most of the key hand hygiene messages are the same throughout these modules, but the clinical scenarios provided within are specific to those groups. We also host the Infection Control Orientation Module for the Australian Commission on Safety and Quality in Healthcare, which is essentially one module, but three variations of, depending on the amount of contact you have with patients. And then we also have Hand Hygiene Auditor Modules, a pre-workshop module for those attending the Gold Standard Auditor Training, and an annual Auditor Validation Module for all auditors to do annually. So why did we want to develop this new learning management system? It was really to improve the learner experience to have them have the ability to be able to start a module and if they get busy on the ward and are called away, they can save it and return to it later. It's also that they have access to historical records and historical certificates. It's a more modern interface and in about a year's time, all of you will get reminders that you need to do the module again. Um, and it's also an improved reporting process as well compared to what we had previously. <coughs> So to move on to the orientation to learners and some troubleshooting for organisation administrators. The changes for the users are that they need to self-register. They need to reg register in the system the very first time they use it. Then they uh, generated a login to be able to use for the life of Hand Hygiene Australia. Hopefully forever. Keep me in a job. Um, they will also be able to access the certificate history anytime they need it. So some troubleshooting for your own organisations is to check where you are directing your users to. If you're asking people to do the hand hygiene learning management system and to complete a module, then please check where you are directing them to because some people are still directing to the old um, URLs. You can direct them in two ways. You can direct them via the Hand Hygiene Australia site and selecting the online learning package tabs, or you can direct them straight to the login page for the learning management system. Please note, and this is a recent addition to our login page, is that Internet Explorer is no longer supported by Microsoft and many people have been experiencing problems trying to do the modules with Internet Explorer. So if possible, please try and direct your people away from Internet Explorer. And we've put some fixes in place so that will be working currently, but in the future as they sunset the program, we can't control for all the changes that Microsoft put into Internet Explorer. So please direct people to other versions of Internet browsers where possible. So when you're directing people to use the system for the first time, you need to direct them to registering here for new users. There is a self-registration form with some mandatory content that they need to fill in. So they need to fill in their name, an employee number, and an organisation if it's within the system. An email address is not mandatory, and that's because we know there's lots of healthcare workers that don't have an email address. So as much as it's not mandatory, if you have an email address, we strongly encourage that you put it in. Okay. Please don't use someone else's email address because then they won't be able to register in the system. So once self-registration is completed, a login, a login for the system is sent to the learner via email if they've provided an email address. If they didn't provide an email address and registration, they won't get an email with their login details. <laughs> Seems reasonably obvious, but maybe not. If if you register with a Hotmail account, then you need to make sure that you check your junk or spam folder because unfortunately in the early days people marked it as junk 
And so now it goes there forever. So some login errors that can occur um, and you can try and help people by troubleshooting is they often try and log in on the wrong web page. They haven't actually registered in the system. They're trying to log in with a hospital ID and um, computer access instead of their own from the learning management system. Or they register a second time because they couldn't remember what they did the first time. So to assist people with the login, please direct them to the email they should have received from the system. Within that email, it clearly identifies what their login ID is and the page to go to to actually log in. If they didn't receive this email, then direct them to that login page and ask if they have actually registered. Ensure that they're not using their email address to, register, to log in with, nor their hospital ID. They're actually using the Hand Hygiene Australia login. And there is a forgotten password function, but if they didn't supply their email address or they wrote it down wrong, then they won't receive the emails from that. Some other errors that are made occasionally is that sometimes people spell their names wrong or their email address is wrong, or they select the wrong organisation to attach their name to, or they select the wrong module to complete. So to assist people with that, if they can actually manage to log in, then as per the hiccup that Karen just talked about, if they click on their name in the top corner, select the personal profile button, they can actually update all of their details, their name, their email address, or anything else that they need to change. If they click on the organisation tab, they can also see which organisation they've attached themselves to on registration. If the organisation is called holding, then that means they didn't find their organisation on registration. And then they were given a text box to fill in some details. Hand Hygiene Australia go through every couple of months and try and place those people where they're meant to be. If they're in an organisation called no organisation listed, then this is where they didn't actually give enough details in that text box to Hand Hygiene Australia, so we've just placed them in a spot for fixing at a later date. At the moment, if someone has put themselves in the wrong organisation or no organisation, then they need to actually contact Hand Hygiene Australia to be replaced. We have a new email address just for the learning management system, um, and we'd appreciate if people use this about to contact us about the learning management system. So if people do manage to log in and get to their learner homepage, then on the homepage there's a task list and on that task list is the modules they need to complete and that's what they select on self-registration. If they need a different module, then they can press the find new module button, choose what type of module they want to complete, whether it's infection control, hand hygiene or auditor modules, and then go through a process of enrolling into the specific module they want. On the achievements tab, they can go to view their certificates of what they've already gained. So this person has four certificates they could access. And if you click on that certificate button, then you go to the actual certificates and you can download them anytime you need them. So to talk a little bit more on reporting now. So within the new system, one of the major changes from the old system is that multiple people can have that reporting access now. A hand hygiene lead person can be given the access to review their auditor module completions. Or maybe you'd like to give access to quality or HR or education, those people that monitor the annual hand hygiene training requirements and they can um, download reports for themselves. There's more options for reporting compared to the old system. So you can look for the most recent course that people have completed. You can look for a specific course and who's completed it. You can run a report for all courses and all learners and have everyone in one report. <coughs> you can customise your reports and pick which um, details you want to appear on their report. You can actually schedule reports too. So they'll be emailed to you at a set defined time that you've requested. So when you log in as an organisation administrator, you get a couple of extra buttons in your menu. You get an organisation button and you get a reports button. So when you click on the reports button, there are some shortcut reports that are presented to you. Three shortcuts. The first report is all learners and all courses. And this is great for matching with a HR database to see who's completed their annual hand hygiene training. The second shortcut report is all learners for any course. So you, you pick a particular course, and this is great for hand hygiene lead people for running to see whether your auditors have done their annual auditor validation module. The third option is all learners for multiple courses. So you can pick a number of courses to run in one report. And this is great if you want to compare who's completed the hand hygiene modules versus who's com <coughs> completed the infection control modules. So the three most common shortcuts are there available on that reports tab. Some troubleshooting for reports is that sometimes your staff are not on your report, but they're there madly waving their certificate on your nose saying, I've done it. It means that they haven't selected the, that your organisation on their registration. Okay, and if that's the case, 
gather together a list of names and send them through to Hand Hygiene Australia and we'll update those for you. If people are on your reports but they don't actually belong to your organisation, then you need to also contact us and we can remove them for you. But we have a future update coming where organisation administrators will be able to check those people off and take them off your organisation. Sometimes those people with organisations starting with A tend to luck out a little bit because that's where people put their names. Now Susan touched on this first thing this morning and Karen's touched on it, but annual auditor validation is something that we try and strongly encourage all auditors to keep up to date with, which is collecting the 100 moments in a year and completion of that annual auditor validation module. So Karen's shown you the auditor and sessions report where you can get that first information about whether they've collected 100 moments. And the shortcut report number two is the one you run to see if they've completed the annual um, validation module. So you want to marry the two together and then you can check off whether all your auditors are valid. Some troubleshooting around the annual auditor validation is that many people say they've completed it, but they've actually completed the nursing module instead. Okay, so just check which module they have completed. And if now that you can run that report just for the auditor validation module, you'll be able to see which ones have actually completed it. The auditor module can be chosen on self-registration and you can go in and enrol in it separately as I've already shown you. So now to go on to some future developments. For those of you who may have logged in from the very start of when we released in March to now, it's changed quite a lot already. And it continues to update as we receive feedback. So please send any feedback um, about in anything to do with the learning management system to us because we are trying to improve the process for everyone as we go. Some current updates in progress is some changes to the login page. A lot of people say, I've done a hand hygiene package, I'm already in there, but I can't log in. We go, when did you do that package? Oh, two years ago. We've got a new system, so we're trying to make that login page a bit more obvious for those people who think they've got to log in and maybe don't. And we're also looking at having a shortcut, shortcut option put into that home page so that you can re-enrol in a module more easily when it comes around to time to do it again next year. And looking at being a, um, making a, a shortcut to enrol in a new module a little bit simpler than it already is. And a shortcut to view certificates because the achievements tab is not always the most obvious for people to find their certificates. So a few shortcuts just to make it more foolproof. Um, and also looking at having learners the ability to change their organisation that they're attached to themselves. So if they haven't been able to find their organisation in the list, hoping that they can fix that themselves. As I said, we're hoping that the organisation administrators will be able to use, um, remove users from their staff lists shortly. And we're looking at a report, report to function where if you currently have registered for one organisation but you need to send your completion details to multiple organisations, then we hope to be able to select some boxes for you to be able to do that so you don't have to complete the module at every organisation you're attached to. Another big thing that we're doing um, from now until next year is we're actually reviewing the content of our learning management packages. We've updated the system that hosts them, now we're going to look at the actual content. So a working party has actually been convened already and we're going to start work on that um, imminently. We're also going to add a renal dialysis package, a dental package, an additional one that I um, haven't included on the list is a, a standalone skin um, care package as well. We're also looking at moving the workshop resources that currently sit on our standard website into the learning management system also for those training, um, training resources for gold standard auditors to run their own auditor training we're going to move them into the LMS also in the future. And if you'd like any more information about the system or any assistance with it, if you want your organisation to appear in the drop down lists um, then just contact us and we can arrange that for you. Okay, so thank you.